Hey folks, it's Allie again, and I'm here today to tell you about how to start a keto diet. And I've got my notes with me, so if I'm looking down, just bear with me. So the first thing you want to do when you start a new diet of any type is to look at the science. And I'll post links down below that help me start with my keto journey. Um, but the main gist of the science is that keto helps you remain satiated or feeling full because you're eating less carbs. And carbs matter because, and this is just my simplification of the science, um, because when you eat carbs, it raises your blood sugar, which raises your insulin, and insulin is a hormone that tells you that you're hungry. So maybe if you've eaten a big pasta dinner, maybe you've had this experience like I have, um, where you eat a big pasta dinner and your belly is full, and then an hour later you want something to snack on, well, that's because you ate this big bowl of carbs and it raised your insulin and it made you hungry. So look at the science. Figure out for yourself if keto is something that you think would help you. Number two, purge. Purge your cabinets. Purge your fridge. Make sure that when you start this diet, you're going to be able to stick to it without having any temptation around you. This is a lot easier if you live alone, like I did for the first year and a half of my diet. But if you live with somebody else, designate your own cabinet so that you don't have to open the cabinet and look at their tempting food. Also, you probably won't need much cabinet space because with this diet you're going to eat a lot less boxed or processed foods, so you're probably going to need more uh, storage space in the fridge. Number three, go shopping. This is the fun part. And I've made a list of some staples that you're going to need um, just to keep around. You might not need all of them but they're definitely worth having on hand so that you can create some awesome ketogenic foods. So some staples that I have in my fridge or in my cabinet um, usually on hand, I have butter, cream, I have some sort of liquid oil, I like olive oil, seasonings, I like to put seasonings on all of my meats that I cook. Usually I sear them in a pan and then put them in the oven for a little bit, maybe 10 to 15 minutes but seasonings really help to bring out the flavor of your meats that you're eating. You might want some hot sauce. You can also keep lemon juice and vinegar and some non-food items that you'll need. Maybe some Tupperware if you like to pre-prepare your meals like I do. Also a food scale. A food scale is really important because it lets you know how much exactly you're eating. This food scale measures in grams and ounces. I use grams because they're a smaller unit of measurement and therefore they're more precise. You may also want some measuring cups or spoons when you're measuring things like liquids, but again, um, you can also measure those out in milliliters or you can try and figure out how much they equal on a gram scale so that you can just measure everything in grams again too. Now when you go shopping for your food list, things that you're going to eat, I go shopping once a week and I pick up everything for my breakfast, lunch, and dinner as well as any kinds of beverages that I might drink. Now, in my opinion, keto works best when you keep it simple. So, my big meal is my supper, and for my supper I'll have a meat and a very large vegetable side. So, I'm not creating these big keto casseroles or these big complex keto meals. I prefer to have a meat and a vegetable, and that's about it. And then that makes it easier to prepare and to measure when you're counting out your calories and your macronutrients. So a typical breakfast for me would include things like cheese, I love mozzarella cheese, nuts, peanut butter, a couple tablespoons of peanut butter if I'm in the mood for something sweet. You can also do the traditional bacon or eggs. And I like to have a cup or two of hot coffee in the morning just before work and it helps me wake up. For lunch, I keep it simple again. I don't have time a lot in the mornings to make my lunch and if I make it at night, I just measure it out into some Tupperware. And usually I'll eat deli meats, cheeses, a simple tuna salad with just canned tuna and mayonnaise. Sometimes I'll eat hard-boiled eggs or just a beef patty made from ground beef. Maybe some leftover chicken breasts from the night before or just an assortment of vegetables that were leftovers from dinner before too. 
if you're one of those people that likes to eat out during lunch, you're going to save so much money because my lunches typically cost like less than a dollar if I measured it out. If I buy at the grocery store for the week for my lunch some turkey meat, that comes out to about six dollars total for the large box of it and I divide that out and it lasts me about five or six days. So that's about a dollar a day just for my lunch. Now for dinner, I'm keeping it simple. Now you can go look at awesome keto recipes on websites like Pinterest, but for me it's easier to maintain the diet if I just have, like I said, a meat and a veggie. So for dinner, anything's game. Any green vegetable really. Beans, green beans, Brussels sprouts, zucchini, asparagus, leafy green salads, um, cabbage, red cabbage, cauliflower, eggplant, squash. Any type of vegetable that's basically not a potato, you can eat some carrots, but remember that they have a little bit of a higher carb count. And then like I said, my meat. I love my meat and I usually sear it on a pan on the stove and then I put it in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes to finish cooking it. Um, you can sear it in butter, but oftentimes I don't just to keep my calories down. I've gotten to the point now um, with my diet that I have to really watch my calories if I want to lose any more weight. So I just stick the meat on a pan with some seasoning, sear it, and then stick it in the oven. And usually I'll eat chicken, um, sometimes any type of beef or I'll make like keto tacos with ground beef or ground turkey or sometimes I'll eat fish just like a, a filet of salmon or tilapia or swai. So you can eat pretty much any meat. Just watch out for sausages um, and things that might have some wheat or sugars in them just because they'll increase your carb count. Now beverages or drinks. Obviously water is the best choice but I grew up on soft drinks, so I love my diet root beer, and I actually like to make a root beer float out of it um, for a dessert sometimes, so I'll just put some heavy whipping cream into a cup, and I'll pour my root beer on top and mix it up, and it's really creamy and delicious and sweet, and for a tablespoon of heavy whipping cream, you get 50 calories and about one gram of carb, but you get this whole drink because your root beer is diet. I love coffee. I drink coffee almost every single day. I have a couple cups in the morning and then maybe another cup at night uh, with a, my dessert, which I'll talk about. So I like coffee. I use it in my Keurig. I buy the bags of ground coffee and use one of those little reusable cups and it works great. I love iced tea with lemon juice. It's hot where I live, so it's really nice in the summertime to just have a nice cold glass of iced tea. And then also, too, I make my own cold brew coffee with a cold brew maker that I got for my birthday. Now desserts. Again, in the beginning, I urge you to keep it simple. Find one ingredient that you like that you could eat for a dessert because if you're making these elaborate desserts, you're kind of allowing yourself, if you have a food addiction like I do, to almost cheat and you're still addicted to those foods. So find something that's really simple that you're not going to think about all day. For example, I like peanut butter. It's my sweet treat of choice. So I'll have a couple tablespoons of peanut butter after my meal for dessert. Or I love lint 90% chocolate. So I'll have two to four squares. Um, that can be four to eight grams of carbs depending um, if I have those macronutrients left for my day. Also sugar-free jello for the Walmart brand that I buy, the Great Value brand, it's about 36, 37 cents per packet. That makes four servings. Each serving is 10 calories and less than one gram of carbs. So you could essentially eat a whole um, sugar-free Jello packet after you make it and only have 40 calories out of your budget and about one to two grams of carbs. So that's a really great option when you're starting out because it's a big dessert. You eat a lot of Jello, it fills you up and it covers that sweet tooth. What I also like to do with sugar-free jello is make popsicles. I just bought some popsicle molds and if you just make the jello and before you put it in the fridge, pour it into the molds and then put it in the freezer, it makes a really great low-cost popsicle because it takes about one packet to make four pops. So if you make eight pops, for example, which come in like a box of regular sugar-free popsicle packages, those would cost you about, if you bought from the store, um, maybe three or four dollars, and they have higher carbs. But if you make your own from Jello, you make eight pops for less than a dollar. So 
I don't know, I'm kind of cheap when it comes to buying groceries, so that's always a better option for me. Now, some things you really shouldn't worry about in the beginning. You might read on blogs about fat bombs. Don't worry about fat bombs. You don't need them yet. You're just starting out, okay? So the thing about fat bombs is that they can almost act like substitutes for foods that you're used to eating for when you used to eat a bad diet or the sad standard American diet. So, don't worry about fat bombs. People use those um, just to increase their fat intake if they find that they're not getting enough fat in their diet. But remember, fat's not a goal for this diet. Fat's just there to keep you satiated or feeling full. So don't worry about the fat bombs. And like I said, keep it simple. Learn to love delicious, whole, natural foods. Now that doesn't mean that you have to go buy organic everything. I'm in my first job out of college. I don't have that much to spend on food. My weekly budget's between $50 and $60 for all three meals every single day. So buy simple food. Start learning how to eat keto foods. Change your tastes. Learn to love savory over sweet and starchy. Well folks, those are just some tips and tricks. I hope you enjoy. Down below, I'm going to link some documents that I use to start the keto diet. Um, and they'll include a list of keto-friendly foods, what to eat, what not to eat, as well as a link to another video by a doctor on YouTube who promotes this kind of lifestyle. Thank you for watching, and if you're looking to lose weight or just change your lifestyle and feel better about yourself, I hope you give to keto a try, and I hope that this video helps you start the keto diet. Again, have a good one. Thanks for watching. Bye.